In order to speak English in real life, like a native English speaker, you must learn the words and expressions that native English speakers use in real life. And that's exactly what our lesson is about today. Are you ready? Well then, I'm teacher Tiffany. Let's jump right in. All right, so for today, Sunday, the word I want you to know and understand is perseverance. Good, again after me, perseverance. Excellent, last time after me, perseverance. Great job. Now this word perseverance just means the ability to keep going despite obstacles or difficulties, the ability to press forward, to keep moving, even when things get difficult, just like you've been doing as an amazing English learner. Sometimes it's been difficult, right? But because of your perseverance, you keep getting better again. The ability to keep going despite obstacles or difficulties makes sense, right? A word that you must know because native English speakers use it in real life. Here's an example sentence. Her perseverance in the face of adversity is truly amazing. Again, her perseverance in the face of adversity is truly amazing. Think about athletes that have to go through a lot in order to achieve a goal. Perseverance makes sense. All right. Check out this other example sentence with perseverance and hard work. He can achieve anything he sets his mind to. I'm going to change this. It's not even in my notes with perseverance. You that's right. You, my friend can achieve anything you want to with perseverance and hard work. You can achieve and you will achieve each and every one of your English goals. Do you believe it? Yes, I believe it too. And sentence number three, the marathon runners perseverance paid off when he crossed the finish line. Again, the marathon runners perseverance paid off when he crossed the finish line. You got it. All right. So remember, this is Sunday's word. Today's word at the time this is going live Sunday's word. I want you to make sure you use it at least one time today. Now we're going to go to the word for Monday, but before I do that, I want to tell you again, if you want to become my homie, that's right. I have tons of extra English lessons that are even better than this one. Even though this one is good. If you want to become my homie and get exclusive English lessons only for my homies, you have to join this channel, not just subscribe. You have to hit the join button right below this YouTube video. If you're watching the video, hit the join button and you'll get exclusive lessons for me. You'll also get lessons about American culture. You'll get so many other lessons that are not available on this channel unless you are my homie. So hit that join button and you'll get some exclusive English lessons and learn even more. All right, here we go. So on Monday, I want you to learn this word right here and use it. Resilience. <laughs> Good. That L makes it a little tricky, right? Again, resilience. Excellent. Last time after me resilience. Great job. Now this just means the ability to recover quickly from difficult situations. Once again, the ability to recover quickly from difficult situations. Now I want you to stay till the end because for story time, story time at the end, I'm going to tell you a story about something that happened to me when I was in Korea as a student, I had to find out the meaning of this word resilience and I was resilient, but don't miss the story at the end. Okay. Here's an example sentence using the word resilience. The community showed great resilience after the natural disaster. They recovered quickly. Next we have this one. She demonstrated remarkable resilience in overcoming her illness. 
It was difficult. It was challenging, but she bounced back. She recovered. And finally, this sentence right here, resilience is key to success in both personal and professional life. You have to be able to recover quickly from difficult situations. In English, we say resilience. You got it. All right. So remember on Monday, I want you to use this word at least one time and make sure you understand it. All right, let's move on to Tuesday's word. All right. Tuesday's word words. You must know because native English speakers use them on a regular basis. Tuesday's word is authenticity. Good job. Again, authenticity. Good. That TH your tongue through your teeth. Again, last time after me, authenticity. Great job. Now this just means the quality of being genuine and true to oneself. Again, the quality of being genuine and true to oneself. I've had many students, many English learners, maybe even you that have messaged me and said, Tiff, I love your passion. I love how you teach your English classes. You seem to really enjoy teaching. That is a fact. I am truly passionate about helping you understand the English language and speaking English with confidence. This shows you that I am being true to myself. I am a very authentic teacher. This is my explanation of my authenticity. Again, the quality of being genuine and true to oneself. You got it. All right. Check out this example sentence. Here we go. She always speaks with authenticity and never pretends to be someone she's not. This is also true. You know, I like to sing right at the end with story time, right? I am myself when I teach these, le these lessons. So again, she always speaks with authenticity and never pretends to be someone she's not. Next example sentence, authenticity is highly valued in the art world. And finally, this one right here, the author's authenticity made her memoir a best seller. Makes sense, right? This word authenticity. Now remember, I want you to use it at least one time on Tuesday. You got it. All right, here we go. Let's move on to Wednesday's word. Another important one introspection. Good. I know it's long again, introspection. Excellent. Last time after me introspection. Great job. Now this just means the act of examining one's own thoughts and feelings. What are you thinking? What are you feeling when you stop, when you pause and actually, huh? Think about, Hey, what are my opinions? Hey, how am I feeling right now? Where is this feeling come from coming from? This is introspection. Again, the act of examining one's own thoughts and feelings makes sense, right? It's important to do a little bit of introspection every once in a while. Makes sense. All right, good. Here's the first example sentence, regular introspection can help improve self-awareness and emotional intelligence. You got it again. You're seeing how these words are really used by native English speakers and can make you sound more fluent as well. His journey of introspection led him to make important changes in his life. And finally, writing is a great way to practice introspection. You got it. So again, on Wednesday, I want you to make sure to use this word at least one time. All right, here we go. Let's move on to Thursday's word, making sure you're taking notes. Thursday's word fortitude. Good again, fortitude. Excellent. Last time after me fortitude. Good. You notice I said it faster, right? Fortitude. Excellent. Here's the meaning courage and strength in the face of adversity, courage and strength in the face of adversity, not 
pulling back. No, I can do this. I have courage. I'm strong enough in the face of adversity. We say fortitude. Check out these example sentences. The soldiers showed great fortitude in the last battle of the year. Once again, the soldiers showed great fortitude in the battle last year. I'll read that one more time. The soldiers showed great fortitude in the battle last year, in the face of adversity, in the face of a difficult battle, they showed courage and strength, fortitude. Here we go. Sentence number two, he faced the challenge with fortitude and determination. Makes sense, right? And finally, this sentence. Developing fortitude is a key component of building resilience in children. And now you know the word resilience, right? Again, developing fortitude is a key component of building resilience in children. Make sense? Excellent. I want you to use this word at least one time on Thursday. Now, Friday is going to be a very special day. On Friday, I have a bonus expression that I want you to understand and use. The expression is take it one day at a time. Once again, take it one day at a time. Now, this just means it's a phrase that is used to encourage someone to focus on the present rather than worrying about the future. For example, your goal is to speak English fluently. Your goal is to truly speak English with confidence. Right now, focus on what you're doing today. Don't focus on what you can't do or the fact that you're not able to speak English fluently yet because you'll get overwhelmed. Focus on today. What are you doing today to achieve that goal? Again, take it one day at a time. Now check out these example sentences. Here we go. Sentence number one, he was overwhelmed by the amount of work he had to do, but his friend advised him to take it one day at a time. His friend let him know, Hey, don't stress. <sighs> take it one day at a time. Makes sense, right? Check out the second sentence. She found it hard to imagine life without her ex, but she reminded herself to take it one day at a time. Listen, don't focus on the end right now. Take it one day at a time. And finally, this example sentence, the road to recovery can be difficult, but taking it one day at a time can make it more manageable. Makes sense, right? This is a very good expression. So on Friday, right here, I want you to remember, use this expression, take it one day at a time. Now, if you enjoyed this lesson, trust me, you have to become one of my homies because I have tons of more lessons for you, but they're exclusively for my homies. So. Click the join button right below this video, become my homie and start enjoying even more exclusive English lessons. And I can't wait to see you become my homie. I can't wait to talk to you in the next lesson. Have a wonderful day and remember to speak English. Do, 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 You still there? Ha <laughs> ha, you know what time it is. It's story time. Hey, I said it's story time. All right, today's story time. Wow, it's really going to help you understand the words you learned today and also the bonus expression. What was the bonus expression again? Yes, take it one day at a time. And also remember, I told you I was going to give you a story about the word resilience. So many of you know, and maybe you know as well that while I was in South Korea, I also attended grad school. I studied oriental painting, got my master's degree in oriental painting. Well, the entire program was in Korean. And at the end of the program, before we could graduate, before we could actually get our diplomas, we had to write a thesis in Korean and we had to take an exam. 
that was in Korean and also included some Hanja, Chinese characters. When I say that was the hardest exam I have ever taken in my life, I'm not exaggerating. Here's how the test was set up. You would take the exam. If you didn't pass it, you had to wait six months to take it again. So I went to the room the very first time to take the exam. It was very difficult. And unfortunately, I failed. Some of my other classmates failed as well. So we said, okay, we're just going to study harder. And next time we're going to get it. So we were okay. We said, hey, let's just do it. So everyone studied. And we came to the test the second time, six months after the first time. When I looked at the test, I wanted to cry because I didn't understand the majority of the exam. But I started filling it out. I started writing out my essay and everything. And unfortunately, I did not pass. Now, I'm a pretty resilient woman. I can push myself, move forward, move through challenges with no problem. But something about this time, it really broke me. But I appeared strong. And I remember one of my coworkers, I'm really close to her still, she walked up to me about a week or two after I had failed my exam. She didn't know I had failed. And she said, hey, Tiff, how did your exam go? And I immediately burst into tears. It was so difficult for me to have failed the exam twice, even though I had studied so hard. So I talked to her and, and I got through my emotions, right? I did some introspection trying to figure out what was making me so sad. And I decided to actually leave Korea for six months. Remember, I had to wait another six months to take the exam. I was debating whether or not I was going to take it, but I said, no, Tiff, you have to finish what you started. So I said, I'm going to take a six-month break, go back to America. I came back to America, and for six months straight, day in and day out, excluding Saturdays because I go to church on Saturdays, day in and day out, I studied for six months, morning until the evening. I just studied for the exam. Then I flew back to Korea in order to take the exam. And I was nervous, but I had studied day in and day out. And it came time to take the test. When I first looked at it, I wanted to cry again because again, I didn't understand the exam, but then I prayed. And all of a sudden, things started to make sense. Now to fast forward, I did pass the exam. And now when I look back at that situation, yes, it was challenging. Yes, it was difficult. Yes, I had to study day in and day out. But because I was resilient, because I kept going, even though things were difficult, I achieved my goal. Never forget that. Yes, English is difficult. Yes, you may struggle. But if you continue to push forward, if you study and remain diligent, you will achieve your English goal. I'll talk to you in the next lesson.